In the heart of a small village, surrounded by lush hills and dusty paths, lived a young girl named Munsa. She was in her teenage years, full of dreams and hope. Her father, a well-respected farmer, had raised her with love and care. Life was simple but Munsa was happy. She loved school, cherished her friends, and enjoyed the warmth of her father's presence. But tragedy struck when her father fell ill and passed away suddenly, leaving Munsa alone in the world. Her stepmother, Asabe, and her two stepsisters, Imani and Zara, saw this as an opportunity to strip her of everything. Munsa's life became a living nightmare after her father's passing. Her once vibrant laughter was now replaced with constant tears. Asabe and her daughters were cruel beyond measure. They forced Munsa to do all the housework, cooking, cleaning, fetching water and washing their clothes, while they lived in luxury doing nothing. Worse still, they made her stop attending school, ensuring she had no way out of her misery. Every day, Munsa would rise before dawn, her hands raw from scrubbing floors and her feet aching from running endless errands. She watched with envy as other children made their way to school, books in hand, their future bright. The weight of her despair crushed her spirit, and she cried almost every night, wishing her father were still alive. She missed the days when her biggest worry was what dress to wear for school or what story her father would tell her in the evening. Despite the harsh treatment, Munsa kept a glimmer of hope in her heart. She had heard whispers from the village women about the strength of the spirit and how one's destiny could never be taken away. But as days turned into weeks and weeks into months, even Munsa's hope began to waver. One fateful afternoon, as Munsa walked home from the well with a heavy pot of water on her head, she crossed paths with a traveling prophet. His clothes were tattered, but his eyes gleamed with wisdom. He stopped her, sensing her troubled soul. My child, the prophet said, I see your pain, but I also see your future. Do not despair, for your journey is not in vain. You are destined for greatness. Your future husband will be wealthy, and your life will change soon. Stay strong, for the time of your deliverance is near. Munsa was taken aback by the prophet's words. She had heard many stories about seers in the village, but she never imagined one would speak directly to her. Though skeptical, his words sparked a flicker of hope within her. Could her suffering truly be coming to an end? A few weeks after the encounter with the prophet, Munsa was on her way to the market to sell the few vegetables she had grown in the small patch behind the house. She kept her head down, trying to avoid the gaze of the villagers who often whispered about her miserable life. As she rounded the corner near the market square, she bumped into a tall, handsome man dressed in fine clothes. Startled, Munsa quickly apologized, but the man smiled kindly at her. My name is Mike, he said, his voice smooth like honey. I'm visiting from the city. I've heard a lot about this village and its people. Munsa, embarrassed by her worn-out clothes and tired appearance, introduced herself quietly. To her surprise, Mike showed no disdain for her humble look. Instead, he was intrigued by her gentleness and humility. Over the next few days, their paths continued to cross, and Mike seemed to take a genuine interest in her life. Little did Munsa know, this was the beginning of a new chapter in her story. As Munsa and Mike grew closer, whispers began to spread through the village. Who was this wealthy stranger from the city? Why was he so interested in Munsa? the poor girl who lived under the cruel thumb of her stepmother. Asabe and her daughters took notice too. They tried to intercept Mike at the market, flaunting their beauty and wealth, but he remained unmoved. His eyes were set on Munsa, and with every conversation, he became more enchanted by her strength and resilience. For the first time in years, Munsa felt hope blooming in her heart. Mike's presence brought her joy and the thought of a future free from her stepmother's cruelty seemed within reach. As Munsa and Mike's bond deepened, Asabe and her daughters grew envious. They couldn't understand why a man as handsome and wealthy as Mike would choose Munsa over them. Imani and Zara, always praised for their beauty, began scheming to win Mike's attention. They dressed in their finest clothes, prepared lavish meals, and even spread rumors about Munsa being a lowly servant unworthy of his affection. 
But Mike's heart had already chosen. He admired Munsa for her kindness, resilience, and grace under pressure. She wasn't concerned with wealth or appearances, and that sincerity drew him closer to her with each passing day. Despite the cruelty she faced at home, she never let it dim her light. To Mike, Munsa was far richer in spirit than anyone he had ever met. Asabe, furious that her daughters couldn't win Mike over, decided to take matters into her own hands. She invited Mike to their home for dinner, presenting a facade of hospitality. Munsa, as usual, was forced to prepare the meal and serve them, while her stepmother and stepsisters pretended to be the perfect family. During the dinner, Asabe tried to manipulate Mike by speaking ill of Munsa, claiming she was lazy and irresponsible. But Mike saw through the lies. He had witnessed Munsa's strength and determination firsthand. After the dinner, he privately confronted Munsa, asking her about her life and the way her stepmother treated her. For the first time, Munsa broke down and told him everything, her father's death, the abuse, and how she had been forced to leave school. Mike was furious but remained calm, vowing to help Munsa in any way he could. Mike couldn't stand by and watch Munsa suffer any longer. He began making plans to take her away from the village. He spoke to the village elders, asking for advice and support. Many of them were aware of Munsa's situation and were glad that someone had finally stepped forward to help her. One evening, Mike approached Munsa with a plan. Pack your things, he said. I'm taking you away from here. You deserve a better life, and I won't let them hurt you any longer. Munsa hesitated, unsure if she could truly leave behind the life she had always known. But the thought of starting fresh, away from the constant torment, filled her with hope. The next morning, while Asabe and her daughters were out gossiping in the village, Munsa gathered her few belongings and slipped out of the house. Mike was waiting for her at the edge of the village, his car ready to take her to the city. As she left the house for the last time, a sense of freedom washed over her, and for the first time in years she smiled. Asabe and her daughters returned home later that day, only to find Munsa gone. Furious, Asabe tried to rally the village to bring her back, but no one came to her aid. The villagers had grown tired of Asabe's cruelty and were secretly pleased that Munsa had escaped her clutches. Life in the city was beyond anything Munsa had ever imagined. Mike introduced her to a world of opportunities. He encouraged her to return to school, and within months, Munsa was thriving. She was no longer the broken girl who had cried herself to sleep every night. She was strong, confident, and determined to build a life worthy of her father's memory. Munsa's relationship with Mike blossomed, and their love grew stronger with each passing day. He treated her with the respect and kindness she had longed for all her life. They spent their days exploring the city, attending cultural events, and dreaming of the future they would build together. One evening, as they strolled through a beautiful garden filled with blooming flowers, Mike knelt before Munsa and took her hand. Munsa, he said, you are the most incredible woman I've ever met. Your strength and heart inspire me every day. Will you marry me? Tears filled Munsa's eyes as she nodded, her heart overflowing with joy. The prophecy had come true. Her husband would indeed be wealthy, but more importantly, he would be a man of great character who loved her for who she truly was. The wedding was a grand affair, attended by villagers who had always supported Munsa and new friends she had made in the city. Asabe and her daughters were conspicuously absent, their bitterness and jealousy keeping them away. But Munsa had long since let go of the pain they had caused her. She was no longer defined by their cruelty she had risen above it. After the wedding, Munsa and Mike began their new life together, building a home filled with love, laughter and hope. Munsa resumed her education and later became a respected teacher, inspiring young girls to never give up on their dreams, no matter how dark their circumstances might seem. In the end, Munsa's story became a legend in the village, a tale of perseverance, hope and the power of love to heal even the deepest wounds. She had faced unimaginable hardship but emerged stronger, proving that destiny, once foretold, could not be denied. And so, Munsa and Mike lived happily ever after, their love a beacon of hope for all who knew them.